UN 영어 뉴스 How rhythm shapes our lives Rhythm plays an important role in how we perceive and connect with the, the world around us even playing a role in our social lives and health My husband reads to me every night before we go to sleep. We deliberately choose books that are familiar, often read children's classics, make frequent appearances, so I do not worry about missing something important when I drift off. I have noticed that after some time, it can be as little as a few minutes if I am especially tired. The meanings of the words are gradually eclipsed by the sounds. I begin to hear sounds and rhythms instead of words and story. The waxing and waning of the accents and stress patterns become a calming, rolling, treasured experience that soothes and resets me after a long day. Why do we care about rhythm? It connects us to the world. It plays a role in listening, in language, in understanding speech, in noisy places, in walking, and even in our feelings toward one another. Rhythm is much more than a component of music. We experience the rhythmic changes of the seasons. Some of us have menstrual, menstrual cycles. We have circadian rhythms, daily circles of mental and physical peaks and troughs, frogs croak rhythmically to attract mates and change their rhythm to signal aggression. Tides, 17-year cicadas, luna phases, perigees, and apogees are other naturally occurring rhythms. Human-made rhythms include the built world, street grids, traffic lights, crop fields, mode designs, in baseball, diamond art fields. The back, splash, back splash behind the kitchen counter. Spatial patterns in geometric visual art forms. Rhythms in the brain have been called out as a basis for consciousness itself. Music and rhythm are rooted in every known culture, what parent does not use, what parents does not use rhythmic rocking to soothe a crying baby. The repetitive sounds and silences that comprise rhythmic patterns make dancing possible, aid in the memory and reproduction of music, and facilitate group singing, playing, or drumming. Rhythm has been used for millennia to tie societal members together. The chants of a religious order, or the cadence calls, cadence calls of military ranks, are just two examples. Poetic works thousands of years ago such as those of Homer, were chanted or sung with rhythm, serving a mnemonic function, mnemonic function, repetitive or complex work, engenders rhythmic accompaniment, in some cases to break the monotony, in others to actually help you perform the work better. Workers performing hard labor, such as rock breaking, chant to keep their sledgehammers swinging in rhythm. Post workers in Ghana 
hand cancel stamps with the a distinct rhythm. Log weavers in Iran use chants with the, a complex musical structure to communicate weaving patterns to their co-weavers. All musical systems and styles have organizational rhythmic motifs. Indeed, the very universality of rhythm is a strong argument for the existence of biological processes governing the perception and the production of rhythm. Rhythms in the brain have been called out as a basis for consciousness itself. Language probably does not immediately come to mind when we think of rhythm. You might have had a high school literature class where you learned about prosodic beat, iams, troches, and anapest, but outside the context of poetry, we rarely think about speech having a particular rhythm. After all, we are likely to say, Oi Bill, you ready yet? Not. Hey there, Bill, do you think it is now the time to go so that it conforms to dactylic tetrameter? What about reader and reading? Here too, we are unlikely to associate reader to reading unless we are reading poetry. In fact, rhythm is a necessary ingredient of linguistic communication itself. Rhythm can be viewed through the lens, the lens of short and longer time scales. Speech has a phoneme, a syllable, word, and sentence length rhythmic units, each unfolding at their own rate. We understand that speech comes in different sized units. The sound an individual individual letter makes the, fun, fun, the phoneme at one extreme and the slowly rising and falling loudness and pitchy contours that unfold over the course of a sentence or a group of thoughts on the other. This letter one is uh, the night time. Reading rhythm, I fall asleep too. These in entwined elements of speech constitute rhythms that must be sorted by our sound minds. We can try to focus on the slow parts of speech, say, the fluctuating pitch of the voice and ignore the fast, the vowel, and the consonant sounds that convey the meaning of the words, or vice versa. But this is usually not possible and rarely desirable. This temporal hierarchy is at work in music too. Music is a mix of slow phrase, steady beats, sustained notes, rapidly changing notes, trills, and drum crashes. Entwined temporal structures are in environmental sounds as well. When walking through the woods, we simultaneously hear slow footsteps, the unfolding crunch of leaves on the foot, and the rapid snap of a trigger. Much as sound units come in different uh, lengths, brain rhythms come in different speeds. Subcortical structures are equipped for microsecond timing, while the cortex is better suited to integrating sounds over a longer time scale. Brain rhythms can be measured both when at rest and when performing an activity. When listening to speech, there are fast brain rhythms that entrain to the fast phonemes 
the near instantaneous constant sounds, mid-range rhythms in the brain, track the rate of syllables, slow brain rhythms correspond to the slow oscillations of phrases and sentences. Similar nested brain patterns are active when listening to music. Are we born to be musical? Imagine a metronome ticking at about 144 beats per minute BPM. Popular songs in this range include Brondis Call Me, The Beatles Back in the USSR, and The Rolling Stones. I can't get no satisfaction. It's for fast, allegro rate, measured another way. These songs have about a half a second between their beats. If we play a conga drum by itself at this rate and record brain waves tree, we'll see neural activity repeating every half second. Boom, 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 or one, two, three, four. But what does the brain do if you listen to the conga drumming along to a song that matches this beat? The brain produces a new rhythm in addition to a response. Quick every sec half second, where musically speaking, the ones are. You see another smaller peak halfway in between 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and flow in from Miami Beach. The brain has worked out the strong weak pairs comprising the song's meter. This tells the brain intrinsic and reinforces both explicit and implied rhythms in the music. This extra rhythm in the brain in the brain wave does not occur when the song is deliberately misaligned with the conga beat. A similar example of the brain creating a beat comes from brain vortex alum Kimili who found that the fundamental frequency of an identical speech sound is enhanced when it occurs on D1 in a 4-bit sequence. The sound minds response to a drum beat is deeply shaped by its overall context. Rhythmic organization operates automatically when we listen to sound. If our rhythmic expectations are violated, our brains behave in a different manner because of our inherent internal sense of rhythm. Rhythm intelligences imagine the familiar rhythm, shape and a haircut, two bits, and tap it up on a table with your finger. Did you tap seven times? Now imagine it again and tap your foot to it. Did you tap seven times again? Or fewer? For me, when I tap my finger on a table, I tap to every note, ignoring the rest. When I tap my foot or snap my finger along to music, I typically tap or snap to the beat or pulse of the song. Not every note. When I tap my finger on the table, hitting the sounds and ignoring the silences, I am tapping out the rhythmic pattern. I am keeping track of how long or short each note is and where the pauses occur. When I tap my foot, I tap four times to the underlying beat or pulse. See the rhythm pattern below, which in this example includes a silent beat. Music has both a pulse and a rhythm pattern notated by time signature.
and no two rest durations respectively. Before I began studying rhythm, if you had asked me about the skills involved in tapping out rhythmic patterns versus tapping out the beat, I would have said you are probably either good at both or not so good at either. If you someone can tap to a beat, you can also tap out a rhythm pattern, right? Wrong. There are multiple ryth rhythmic intelligences. You cannot predict how someone will perform one rhythm task by how they perform a different rhythm task. This was first noticed in extreme cases where a person with brain damage could be impaired in one sort of rhythmic ability, but not another. We have since learned these distinctions are fundamental to how the system works. We see these associations between rhythm skills in all of us, confirming the idea that rhythm is not an all or nothing ability, and more intriguing, our proficiency executing one type of rhythm or another bears on our language skills. Both beat keeping and rhythm pattern skills predict language development and reading ability. However, only rhythm pattern ability has a bearing on understanding speech in noise, as we will see in a moment. Brain rhythms, rhythm pattern skills are associated with the slower brain rhythms. Second, while beat keeping skills are associated with the faster brain rhythms, milliseconds and microseconds. Phonemes, syllables, and sentences range from microsecond to millisecond to second time, respectively. Brain rhythms can predict language development in infants and children. Brain rhythms can also determine a person's strengths and bottlenecks related to language and the ability to make sense of an auditory scene while listening in noise. Children who recognize differences in rhythm patterns and tap to a beat learn to read and spell more easily. Several beat keeping skills are impaired in older children with dyslexia. My own team have found a link between beat keeping and language develop development in adolescents and in children as young as 3 years old. What is the connection between rhythm skills and what might appear to be unrelated skills like reading and writing? There really is a rhythm in language beyond the rhyming, beyond the rhyming of poetry. It is inherently a part of pronunciation. Rhythm matters even in single words, record, contrast, project, and produce can be either nouns or verbs depending on which syllable is stressed. Running speech also has a rhythm. A YouTube search for drumming to speech will uncover some nice examples. A personal favorite is the one with the the scene from the Gene Wilder Willy Wonka movie. The video shows a drama playing along to the rhythms of the dialogue between Willy and the Grandpa Joe, so you cannot miss the rhythm in speech. Tabula player Jacques Hussein tells us his father taught him to speak using drum rhythms when he was a baby. In tabula, each finger is assigned a syllable, and playing, a, playing the tabula is akin to speaking in phrases. 
In all languages, there is a definite rhythmic aspect to spoken language brought about by alterations in stress, duration, and pitch of the syllables. This was resoundingly brought home to me firsthand when Hussein accompanied me on the congas during a speech on rhythm and language. Children who recognize differences in rhythm patterns and tap to a bit learn to read and spell more easily. Quite simply, rhythm in speech tells us when important information starts and stops, stressed syllables emerge at roughly regular intervals, and importantly, carry the majority of the information of speech with an ongoing rhythmic flow. The listener is guided to the important features of the sentence by the expectancy rhythm etc. and so primed we understand the content of the spoken word better. With the understanding of spoken speech comes the ability when learning to read to make the necessary connections between the sounds of language and its written form. One of the greatest impediments to successful spoken word communication is noise. The rhythm of speech helps us. This is because the rhythm in speech helps us fill in the gaps when noise causes us to miss a few words. Just as a rhythm pattern evolves over the course of a measure of music, learning speech evolves over time and thus is suited for a slow scale of auditory processing. The strong and weak stresses, phrases, and boundaries of language are relevant to the whole spoken sequence. The ability to reproduce rhythm patterns seems to draw on the same skills required for forming the auditory sense that comprise hearing speech that is barely audible above noise. Hearing speech in noise can be partly predicted by one's ability to tap out rhythm patterns and the better you are at navigating rhythms and musicians of any stripe, not just drummers, fall into this category. The more you can capitalize on the rhythmic patterns in speech and echo what was said despite the noise, rhythm and sociali socialization. How we feel about another, another person is conveyed by the rhythm. Workers synchronize their steps to aid communication. Social encounters with rhythm influence our attitudes. The extent to which a person synchronizes with an experimental, experimental affects the person's opinion of the likability of the experiment. Mental. University students were instructed to tap along to a metronome, while an experimenter was also tapping their finger nearby. When the experimenter tapped at the same rate, the rating given in response to how likable was the experimenter was higher likability aside. The mere presence of an another person drumming along with a task will improve performance. Pre-crazy children asked to perform a rhythm synchronization task, perform it better if they are drumming along with another human than to an impersonal beat coming from a loud speaker. Even in very young children, being literally in sync with another person engenders positive feelings toward them. In one study, an experimenter bounced 
14 months old children belong to music, either on the beat or intentionally off the beat. When the bouncing session was over, the baby was placed on the floor and the experiment deliberately dropped an object and acted out needing help to pick it up. The babies who were bounced on beat were much more likely to help the experimenter retrieve the object. Having apparently formed a social bond via rhythm that prompted cooperation, the offbeat babies were less likely to help. Rhythmic synchrony had led to interpersonal synchrony. Along similar lines, the brain rhythms of musical performers and their audiences have been measured in concert settings. The brain rhythms tend to synchronize, and the more synchronization between performer and listener, the more listeners report enjoying the performance. Music in general, and the rhythm in particular, does an uncommonly good job. Fostering a sense of community. Indeed, music being played at negotiation sessions helps to smooth the conversations and leads to breakthroughs and compromises. Musicians without borders is used to form relationships in troubled regions around the world to bring hope, comfort, and healing. To a diverse populations. The Resonance Project and the Jerusalem Youth Corps, which are forming bonds between Israeli and Palestinian children, are other examples of using musical rhythm to overcome differences. The early days of the 2020 coronavirus pandemic were marked in some European countries. by daily sessions of songs song from balconies to connect with others at a time of isolation and to communicate appreciation and solidarity with health care workers. Jackie Hussein describes using each finger as a syllable when playing the twin hand drums of the tabla. Rhythm for health, traditional healers in all regions of the world have relied on rhythm as a primary force in their rituals and practice. Today, rhythm helps us exercise as we move to keep ourselves healthy. Therapists have long used our capacity to perceive sound patterns to strengthen communication skills, they rely on rhythm and the concepts of entrainment to a beat, vital violations of a beat, and pattern recognition as core features of their protocols, reminiscent of the sea in the calling for the film, the king's speech, where King George the sixth overcame a stuttering problem by rhythmically singing his words, words. Rhythm capitalizes on our sound mind auditory, auditory motor connection. First mentioned by the American Medical Association in 1940, music therapy was put to work helping wounded World War I soldiers recover from their injuries, including what we now call traumatic brain injury. Rhythm-based therapy has a growing status in recovery from concussion and other brain injuries, addressing both cognitive and emotional health. Rhythm is used to great effect to pace walking in individuals with movement disorders such as Parkinson's disease, for example. After all, Walking is a rhythm. Numerous studies have found that other disorders 
that involve movement such as aphasia, stuttering, difficulty with respiration, swallowing, and speaking, respond to music therapy. Therapy involving rhythm also has shown promise in addressing communication and social behavior in people on the autism spectrum. Children who cannot otherwise speak can form words and sentences when accompanied by a clear rhythm. There are children on the autism spectrum who will not engage in a verbal conversation but will gladly carry on a rhythmic conversation with another person on drums. If I had a magic wand, I would make a rhythm an indisputable part of language therapy through music and rhythm-based instruction. This would mean a closer alignment among fields of speech therapy, music, and music therapy. There are expressive rhythm-based training programs which make synchronizing to rhythm an expressive core exercise with the aim of improving timing in the brain. Some have been used to bolster language, reading, and communication skills, and to so with the tasks that engage both the slow and the fast sound processing circuits in the brain, thus drawing on multiple rhythm intelligences. Music with a regular and predictable rhythm can lead to status of enjoyment or emotional trans transcendence. Pythag Pythagoras viewed music, Pythagoras view viewed music as a gateway to the realm of the dead, at least judging from his supposed dying request that the monochord on ancient one-stringed instrument be played during his final moments. The music historian Ted Gioia has described Gregorian chants as so rich in overtones that you have the impression they are angels, not men. Grateful that the drummer Mickey Hart and I have discussed the calm yet alert and energized state that drone compositions, musical pieces consisting of sustained sounds produced by monochords or other instruments and manipulated in the studio to swell and build can induce. We are working together to investigate the neurophysiological reaction to some of his uh, drone compositions. A while back, one of my sons got a hairline fracture in his foot. As he was not healing as fast as his physical therapist was hoping, he was assigned daily sessions with a bone vibrator. The idea behind vibration therapy is that if you cannot use your musculoskeletal system normally, for example, due to an injury or osteoporosis, you miss out on the natural stimulation that occurs as your muscles imperceptibly relax and contract to maintain posture. This can lead to bone tissue atrophy, imposing vibrations and around 30 to 50 Hz at the injury site. Simulates natural postural adjustments, stops the reabsorption of bone tissue, and promotes the bone growth that would ordinarily be achieved as part of a typical day-to-day -day movement. It appears that Low frequency vibrations spur activity in the stem cells that make cartilage, muscles, and bones. 
this process may also be useful for strength training in non-injured people. It turns out the vibration rate of a cat pole is in the exact same range as used in vibration therapy for bone growth. Cats purr when they are happy, of course, but in what other circumstances do they purr when they are injured? There is a hypothesis, hypothesis that cats purr as a mechanism to keep their bones and muscles stimulated and healthy and to restore their health when injured. Maybe it is not a coincidence that cats have durable health and a lower incidence of osteoporosis than dogs. Maybe this is the secret to their nine lives. The currency of the nervous system, electricity, is nothing if not rhythm. The better we understand the biological basis of rhythm, the better we will be able to employ rhythm in all its guises to improve communication and to better understand ourselves.